Once you stop expecting Arc to be like every other browser, you honestly can't go back. In the first half of this video, I'm going to go over the major features that make you go, okay, I'm definitely not in a regular browser. And in the second part, we're going to go over those smaller but very impressive features that just make Arc a complete joy to use. Arc is currently invite only, but there's an invite from MKBHD that accepts 10,000 people. I tested it before filming this and it still worked, so I'm going to leave it in the description. I also want to mention that it's only available on Mac for now, but they've announced that they will have a Windows version soon. And lastly, it's built on Chromium, so all your extensions will work, and transitioning from one browser to the other is as seamless as it gets. So let's now go over each feature one by one, starting with how Arc approaches tabs. And it's not like tabs are removed, they just behave differently. For starters, they're moved to the left hand side. So if I come here and I pull up a new tab, such as GitHub, you can see it lives here on the left. And this makes a ton of sense, since that's the layout of most apps like Slack, Notion, Discord, etc. But aside from looking different, they behave differently as well. Arc merges tabs with bookmarks. There's this line over here, and everything above it is a bookmark, and everything below it is a disposable tab. If you want to bookmark a tab, you can simply drag it past that line. And if you want that tab to have its own little button and be what they call a favorite tab, you can just drag it all the way to the top. And this way, it'll be persistent across spaces, which we'll get to in just a second. So I'm going to open up a few tabs here for contacts like Notion and Slack. And you can also give tabs a name. So if I come here and I double click it, I can give it some context. And I do this all the time, especially when I'm researching, to give myself more context of what that tab really means. Another way it behaves differently is that if you have a tab open that's already a bookmark, you're not going to see it listed here on the left. So in here you can see that I have GitHub bookmarked. So if I click on it, you can see that the tab is open, but it's not listed here on the left. So you might be thinking, how do I know which tabs are actually open or not? And to see that, you just press Control Tab, and these are the three tabs that are open. So if I close some of these, and then I go again, Control Tab, you see we only have Notion open. This is actually a great feature because when you think about it, there's no need to see a tab listed that you have bookmarked already, like your email or Slack over here on the left, because it diminishes the importance of a brand new tab. And this way, every time I see I have a new tab here on the left, it feels almost like a small list that I need to get done. And most of the time, I have zero tabs listed here on the left because when I'm working, there's three or four tabs that are constant. I have my email, which is ProtonMail, which I have as a favorite, Slack, which is also a favorite, Notion's also a favorite, and then I have apps like GitHub, and then I also have Stack Overflow, which is not a favorite, but it is a bookmark. And then I also have folders, which you can get by right-clicking and pressing New Folder. And I like to have all my pin tabs and folders, so let's say that this one would go here, and this would go here. And this means that if I open up a new tab that isn't already bookmarked, like ESPN, it's going to be here below this line, and it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. And all of this goes back to the whole idea of decluttering and promoting a distraction-free zone. But this covers two out of the three things that traditional browsers have on display at all times, which is bookmarks and tabs, but it doesn't cover extensions. And the thing is, most extensions are meant to work in the background, and most of us don't really go out of our way to toggle on an individual extension. So for most of us, that space is usually wasted. But sometimes we do want to toggle them. So how do we do that if they're not visible? We can do that by hovering over on the top right side and toggle extensions. I don't have any extensions on this Arc account, but if I did, they would be here. And you can add straight from here as well as manage the ones that you already have. But you can also do it via the command palette by typing command L. And then you can type either the individual extension name or manage extensions to see all of them. We're going to cover the command palette in detail in just a minute. But this leads me to my favorite feature of Arc, which is spaces. Spaces is a way of segmenting your browsing experience based on different areas of your life. You can create a new space by coming here and pressing the plus icon, new space. And let's give this space a name and let's say that this is a space for you to just relax and not work. And let's name it something like play. And you can switch around between spaces by pressing control one or two or by holding shift and scrolling on your scroll wheel. And then let's name this something like work to keep things simple. You can also assign it different icons and even different colors as well. And this can be as simple or as robust as you want it to be. If you want, you can just have different spaces to segment your bookmarks. For instance, personally, I have three spaces, one for work, another for this YouTube channel, and a last one for just leisure. And if you use something like Tiago Fortes para method, then you might want to have each space be an area of your life. And then each space can have its own independent bookmarks. But spaces can be so much more than that. And to really understand it, we need to go over profiles. Because by default, if you just create another space, it's going to have all of your Chrome extensions and your favorite bookmarks, which are these here at the top, as well as your browser cookies. 
But what if you don't want that? What if you want each space to be completely independent so that if you go on websites like Gmail or YouTube, it automatically logs you into a specific account? You can do that by creating different profiles and assign those profiles to different spaces. So if I come here to this space and I toggle on the three dots and I go on profile, you can see that by default, we're on the default profile since we don't have any other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new profile. And Arc does a great explanation here. They say profiles make your spaces truly separate with their own history, safe passwords, extensions, and other browsing data. No more flipping between work or personal accounts. So I'm gonna give this a name like work and I'm gonna assign it to the workspace. So now when we're here in our workspace, we have the work profile associated with it. I'm gonna bring back the bookmarks that we had previously. And then if we go back to the play space, we can either leave it as the default profile or create a new one entirely. And now I can customize each space differently all the way from bookmarks, extensions, and they're completely separate. But where this gets really powerful is with those services that I have two or more accounts with. So I can assign my business account to the work area and my personal account with the space area. Let's say that you use Gmail both for your work and your personal email. You can have a Gmail tab on both spaces, but each of them is signed into different accounts. So if you open up Gmail on your play space, it's gonna open up your personal account. If you open up Gmail on your workspace, it'll open up your work account. And there's a lot of situations where this comes in really handy for me. For instance, I have two Amazon accounts, one for my business and a personal one. Same for cloud storage accounts and my favorite of all, which is YouTube. I have different YouTube profiles for each of my spaces because many times, either because of work or to manage this YouTube channel, I need to go on YouTube. But I just know that if I go on YouTube, there's definitely gonna be a video that is gonna stand out to me and I'm not gonna resist the urge to watch it. So instead, if I open YouTube on my workspace, each video is gonna be related to work and the urge then becomes much smaller. And by doing this, not only do I get the benefit of not getting distracted, but I actually get recommended better stuff because I'm not mixing all of my interests in one account. Another thing worth noting is that your extensions don't carry over from one profile to another. A lot of people complain about this, but this is a feature and not a bug. There are a lot of extensions that I don't really need in different profiles. For instance, I use TubeBuddy and vidIQ as extensions to manage my YouTube channel, but those extensions can really clutter YouTube and I don't really need nor want them if I'm browsing for leisure. Profiles in Arc are similar to profiles in Chrome, but in Chrome, a different profile is another window. It's not as seamless as switching spaces. And the whole point of Arc is that unless you want to, all you really need is one window. So before we go over the rest of the features, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, which is Scrintle. Scrintle is a visual first knowledge management tool that combines the power of mind mapping with network note taking, where you can brainstorm and develop ideas all in one place. This unique approach helps you see the big picture and the details at the same time. Scrintle is designed to be intuitive and easy to use with no user manual and zero learning curve. Whether you're creating a new note, linking ideas or sharing your thoughts with others, each step is straightforward and intuitive. Another place where Scrintle really shines is collaboration. You can invite others to view your mind maps and they can contribute their own thoughts and ideas. This is all done in real time so you can work together synchronously no matter where you are in the world. You can also comment on each other's thoughts, provide feedback and more right within the platform, which makes it an excellent choice for team brainstorming sessions, project planning or group studies. Scrintle is offering a special early access pricing for a limited time and if you use my link in the description, you can get 20% off your first year. Thanks Scrintle for sponsoring this video. There's one other major feature which seems small, but it's huge, and that's archive tabs. In Arc, once you close a tab, you're not actually deleting it, you're archiving it. And you can find them here by holding shift and scrolling on a mouse wheel all the way to the left. And you're gonna find them here in archive tabs, and this means that you can very easily restore it. So if I come to the command palette by pressing command L and I start typing the URL of a tab that I know I was, say, a week ago, it's gonna find it and I can easily bring it back to life. All right, so just as apps like Notion, Obsidian, or VS Code, Arc also has a command palette. And if you've used any of those apps, it works just as you would expect. You press command L, which you can customize to whatever you want, and then you can access pretty much everything from here. At this point, I've become so accustomed to using a command palette in every app that in Chrome, I would use Paletro, which is a paid app that mimics the functionality of a command palette. But this comes natively with Arc. And then we have split screen. If you drag a tab into the screen, it's gonna open up side by side and you can adjust the margins here. And as you can see, it also created a combined tab over here on the left. So if I open another tab, I can always come back to that same split view anytime that I want. I can take it a step further by dragging it to the top so that it's a bookmark, and I can also rename it by right-clicking, pressing rename, and then give it a name that makes sense for that split view. And I can also do it via the command palette. So if I come here to the Stack Overflow tab, and I press Command T, and I search for Notion, 
and I click it while pressing option, it's going to open up in split view. And speaking of split screen, Arc is the only web browser where I like to use full screen as all that it takes is to press Command S which removes the sidebar. A quick note on this is that Command S is already a hotkey in most browsers. It's used to save the page that you're in, but I find that I never use it. So what I do instead is I come here to the keyboard shortcuts by pressing Command L, keyboard, and to find it you can just type Command S. And when you press it, you can see that Arc tells us here that you can press this shortcut once to use the website shortcut or twice to use Arcs. I always wanted to use Arc, so in here I can just toggle on Prefer Arc. And this way, every time that I press Command S, it's always going to show or hide the sidebar as opposed to save the web page that I'm in. This is so good that every time I'm somewhere like Notion or Slack with the sidebar hidden, I forget that I'm actually on the browser and not the app version. And this feature is so good that I've actually stopped using the app version of a ton of different apps like Notion and Slack and just use them on the browser instead. It's much nicer to have them both here on the browser and because I have a big screen, I can just open both or more side by side without having to open multiple apps or manage different windows. Another cool little feature is Peek. Peek allows you to preview pages within the same tab instead of opening them in a new tab. This is particularly useful in places like Twitter or email where you might have a link that you just want to peek and not really keep as a tab. And to give you an example, let's come here to my email and I have one here from Arc and let's click on this link right here. You can see that it's opening up its own little window and it's not here as a tab. And then I can just see whatever I want to see and then just close it when I'm done. But if I do want to open it as a tab, I can just hold command when I click on it and then as you can see here, it open up as a tab. And it's small little features like this that make Arc a joy to use. It really does promote a clutter-free environment. And speaking of promoting a clutter-free environment, how many times have you kept a full tab open so you can watch a video while you did something else? Probably a lot of times, right? But with Arc, if you're watching a video on one tab and move to another tab, that video continues playing as a picture-in-picture -picture mode. So if I pull up my latest YouTube video and I hit play, and let's say you're then working on something else and you click out of it, that video still remains in the background and you can adjust it to whatever you want and you can even move it across multiple screens if you have multiple monitors. And there's also a new feature that just came out, it's called air traffic control and it's great if you make use of spaces and profiles. So let's go back to this example here and we see that we have a work and a play space. So now let's say I open up an email on my email app or a text message that contains a link. With air traffic control, you can decide with predefined rules where that link will open. Let's say I have an Amazon link and I'm logged in on my Amazon account in one of my spaces. Then you can simply tell it that every link that comes from say amazon.com is to be opened on the personal space. And to do that, you can just come here to command palette by pressing command L, type in link and it's this here, open link preferences. And then you have the option here, air traffic control. You can then create a new route and you can choose this rule, for instance, URL contains amazon.com, open in, and then you have the option most recent space, play, work, or little arc, which we'll get to in a second. And in this case, we can just put in work, exit out of it, and now every amazon.com link that you open outside of arc is gonna open up in the space that you just set. And this is what's great about Arc. There's so many small touches that really add to the overall experience. For instance, if I press Command Shift C, it's gonna copy the current URL and then I can just paste it elsewhere. If I press Command Option Shift C, it's gonna copy the current URL in Markdown. So then I can just come to Notion or Obsidian and paste that URL and it's already formatted. Like I said in the beginning, none of these individual features are groundbreaking or game-changing by any means, but it's a combination of all of them that makes Arc so appealing once you get used to it. So let's now go over some features that I personally don't use, but it might be useful to you. And the first one is what Arc calls Little Arc. So when you have it enabled and you press Command Option N from anywhere on your Mac, it's going to open up Little Arc, which is a small little browser window that you can use to quickly visit a site without actually switching to Arc. I use Alfred to launch everything on my Mac. So if I have Little Arc turned on, every time I launch a new site, it's gonna open on Little Arc. So I just leave it turned off. Then we have three different features, which are all here all the way to the left, which are downloads, easels, and notes. But since we're here, I might as well also cover media. So the way media works is that it'll show you what media you have on your desktop. So in my case, all I have is screen recordings for this video. But this does come in handy every once in a while, so if I'm on Slack and I want to share some media that I know it's on my desktop, I could just come here and I'll just drag and drop it to share it. So I do use this sometimes, but the same cannot be said for the other three here, and the first one is downloads. This is just a UI to see what you've recently downloaded, and there's nothing wrong with it, I just don't really have a need for it. And then we have easels and notes, so if I come here to command palette and I type new note, 
And then I can do some basic note taking here. And as you can see, it also became its own tab. So if I want to take some notes that relate to say this project here in a folder, I can do my notes and then I can just drag and drop it into that folder. And then we have easels, which is a mind map tool. So if I come once again to command palette, type in new easel, you can do some basic mind mapping here. And you can also copy URLs from different tabs here and paste them and incorporate them into your mind map. And again, I don't really use it because I don't have a need for it. And the last feature that's admittedly cool, but that I don't really use is the native screenshot feature. And you can access it via the command palette or by pressing command shift two. And this is great if you want to capture a specific element in a website. I've been using CleanShot X for years. It's a little overpriced, but I get it free with setup and it meets my needs. So I don't really have a use case for this either. I want to also say that Arc does not sell our data, but it's also free to use. So you might be thinking, well, how does it make money then? And the team says that they're going to implement a business model like that of Notion. It'll be free for users like you and me, but paid for companies. This is great, and every time I do adopt a new piece of software, I want them to have a reliable business model, as that's the only way to ensure longevity. I don't often change my tools because it's easy to just be on the constant search for the perfect tool and switch around all the time. So when I do switch something, it's either because something considerably better is available or because I have a serious problem with what I'm using. And Arc for me is something considerably better than what I was using before. This year, I finally replaced Chrome with Arc, but I've also replaced multiple different apps with Readwise Reader, and you can find more about it right here. Thanks, Scrinto, for sponsoring, and thank you guys for watching. Have a great one.